Good morning, good morning, Christian family. How is everyone doing this morning? God is good. We got to see another day. We're blessed to see another day in the word of the Lord. Today's March 27th. Um, ooh, the Lord woke me up with a good one today. Um... Now, this is one reason why I think I told you in my, one of my videos that um, I started a YouTube channel before, but I took it down. This is months, this is like during the summer. I became a Christian in May. And I always, I always wanted to like put out there Jesus is real god is real our heavenly father is real because i was always believing that there's i knew there was a god for one but i didn't the one of the bible i just thought was fake it was just made up and things like that until i had a testimony until i had experience that god jesus saved me and if, at that point i always told jesus i want to help others find you as well you know, um, but I was always, I wasn't really sure that Jesus actually wanted me to, 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 to be that person preaching in a church or on a corner or even making these YouTube channels. Because as I told you in my other videos, I don't like social media, put my face on social media. I, the whole time I was in Mexico and I took many pictures down there and videos, but not one time. My face was in any of those pictures. I don't believe in selfies. I I take pictures and I send to my friends and that's it. I don't put put YouTube put my face on TikTok or none of that. No, that's not. I'm 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 a more of a private person. I don't like doing it. So doing this YouTube thing, I really had a problem with it. So I said, but God, but the Holy Spirit convicted me. Says it's not up to you. But you need to do what God wants you to do. You're here for a reason. You're here to be a watchman. And where Ezekiel 33 comes in is if God, if the Lord tells you to do something, send a message about Jesus. Now it's not it's it's not up to it's not up to you if the person receives it or not, but if God sends you, makes you a watchman and tells you to tell people about him, or especially an individual, and you refuse to do so, and that person happens to die in his sin, well, as you know, that person is going to hell for not receiving. But me, that blood's going to be on my hands. So I'm going to read Ezekiel 33. This is the morning. This is, this is the morning's word. There is. Oh no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I meant the wrong chapter. First of all, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. Son of man, speak to the children of the people and say unto them, when I bring the sword up on a land, if the people of the land take a man of their cost and set him for their Watchmen, if when he seeth the the sworn come unto upon the land, he blows the trumpet and warns the people. Then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet <clears throat> and takes not warning, if the 
sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be up on him. But he that takes warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman sees the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned if the sworn come and take any person from among them he is taken away in his equalities but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So family, this is why I make these videos and I have to remain making these videos and I have to remain doing the Lord's work as we should anyway, because one thing I noticed about being a Christian, we all have a duty. Not everyone. And like a sister has said in one of her, her, her comments that I'm should, I should not compare myself to other watchmen and to other ministries because God put aside Every, a, a, a tax for every one of us. Now, maybe he doesn't want me to go overseas or, or abroad and, and and help the thing, what I want to do. Maybe he don't want me to do that for, for, for a real reason. You know, God does what he wants. I don't know. I don't know. Even though I would love to go because I have a passion for people and the places I want to go, I understand that region very, very good. Geographically, I understand the area. But maybe God don't want me to go there. But point blank is Satan will come in and say, well, maybe you're not supposed to do, no, do, do, do this at all. Maybe God never called you to, to, to speak on his behalf. Maybe. And that's what almost happened a few weeks ago. When I, when I, could, when I couldn't raise funds to get the equipment I need, I, I was having issues with funds of growing this channel. And I was asking the Lord why I haven't. Prosper. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not moving. You know, to do more for the kingdom. You know, and so Satan are coming right there and say, "Oh well, God don't want you to do anything. Give up." Like I almost did. And now, let's say that I need to make a certain video, like this video, like this, this, this right here. This word, I could be helping someone else. Maybe someone else about to give up. Now, me sharing this this verse, the scripture out of the Bible, I encourage the next sister or uh, brother to not give up because maybe he's going through some struggles. Because family, to be honest, I'm telling you, a lot of our sisters and brothers are being heavily attacked. I'm not the only one. I know this in this season, Satan is attacking his people more now than ever before. Even when I became a Christian last year, I was not under so much attack like I am this year right now at, at this moment. I was asking myself, Lord, why am I having issues finding a wife? Why do I always have issues keeping friends? I hear I live in New York. You know how to get real options because they was living for the world. Why am I always alone? Well, the Holy Ghost said, listen, you are a chosen person. And being a chosen one of God is not my choice. It's not, it's not my choice. God makes, he, he just chooses people. Why? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. But what I think I, what I, what I do know is his chosen ones suffer the most. And when I look at my life, now he but he'll protect you, but he definitely will you will suffer in this world the most. And family, not to say that God doesn't bless us, 
he does bless us. We wake up this morning. He blesses us, right? We have, we have shelter. We have food. He blesses us, right? But this is where I was asking, I was questioning God two weeks ago when I was comparing myself with my, with my, with my ministry here to other ministries that, that clown our Lord and Savior, that mocks him while they progressing in their ministry and they send the wrong message. And this is why I was comparing myself to these other guys because these other guys, they're not leading the people in the right direction. Like you have one, I was just watching one sister and it's funny because she was reading Ezekiel 33, that this one, I'm not gonna say his name, this one, um, well, I, should, I, don't, I, don't, I forgot how to remember, but, um, she does rapture dreams, but she had made a special video for this individual that has a lot, that has a big following that has been doing this for years. He's been predicting rapture dates, which I don't know why he predicts it because no one knows the time or day when Jesus comes back. Now, even though I've been saying in my heart and my spirit, I feel it's going to be soon. I feel it's going to be this year for some reason. I don't want, I don't, I don't, and I shouldn't do that. And I repent for doing that. I, I repent, I repent for saying that because let's say it doesn't happen this year. But I won't repent because I don't want to mislead no one. And this is why I'm reading this today. You know, um, so because it's scary, because it's, it, it, you know, we have to be careful what we put, what kind of content that we put out here. Because we don't want to mislead. That's why I say read scriptures. I always tell you guys, take it to take it to take it to prayer. Take it to the take it to the Lord. Anything I'm saying, your scripture, take it to the Lord. Because I don't want to be responsible for anything. And that's why I had to redo this. Do another. Do, do we open my YouTube channel again? Because. If the Lord, as Christians, we're supposed to be not closet Christians. You do know what a closet Christian is? A person is a Christian, but just don't want to talk talk about Jesus. Basically, not saying that they're embarrassed, but they could also be having fear. Because the devil, the devil, which is of the devil, that's not of God. Fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit, you know. God doesn't give us fear. Satan does. So, um... But yeah, so getting back to the whole thing is that's why I always encourage you, encourage you guys to spread the word of Jesus to people that you don't know, because that blood could be on your hands. If that person, you, we don't, we don't, we're not promised the next second on this earth. We don't know what's going to happen if the person is not saved and he dies in his sins and doesn't know Jesus and you were supposed to tell him that blood is on your hands. As you just as I just read in Ezekiel thirty three, okay, that's why I always tell you, brothers, brothers and sisters, spread the word of Jesus to your coworkers, to your friends. If you're in school, other classmates, who cares of what they think? If if and you know, and your spirit will tell you that you're supposed to tell this person about Jesus. If that person denies you, okay, then that's 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 that person's issue. But you have the responsibility as a watchman. And everyone that's a Christian is a watchman. Yes. Everyone that's a Christian. That's a Christian is a watchman. Because we as Christians, our job is to bring the kingdom. Is talk about the kingdom and bring people to Jesus to save their soul. That's what Jesus wants us to do. To encourage each other. To love one another. Because he loves us. He loves us. He doesn't want to see no one perish. And it's our job as watchmen to go out into the field and bring people to Jesus. That's why I want to do that. That's why I want to go over to Southeast Asia because they, they don't have that opportunity like, like people in this country that and then keep denying them to hear about Jesus like that. You don't have people walking around the villages passing out, you know, flyers and, you know, all types of pamphlets about Jesus. 
You know, you don't have that here. You don't have that. People in cities like New York, it's everywhere, and they don't take advantage of it. They don't take advantage of it. You know, um, I answered my I answered my question again yesterday when I said, "Why here in New York I have more issues than any other city I lived in?" You know, well, I answered my the Holy Spirit led me to the my, my ask my own questions like the, like I asked myself why some living here in New York City I have more issues than any and anywhere else I ever lived. And I lived in many places, many cities. I lived in Tokyo. I lived in in um, in, in, a, in a city in Shanghai, uh, China. You know, China is very populated. I lived in Hong Kong. I lived all over. I've been in all over, right? <laughs> in Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Las Vegas, and especially Las Vegas. You figure Las Vegas? I will have more issues in Las Vegas because that's supposed to be sin city. Las Vegas is what? What's in Las Vegas? Everything of lust, every vice you can think of is in Las Vegas. But here's the thing. New York is an old city. Las Vegas, Los Angeles are that old as New York. This is when, well, you know, history, everything started mainly on this part of, the, of, the, of this country that developed America. And New York has a lot of people. So it has a lot of demons here. A lot of demons. It's not the city that's the problem. It's the people who are in the city with these demons. And it's not even the people. It's the principalities and, and the demons that are that are inhabited into the people here. Because a person can have a thousand demons. A whole bunch of demons. So... And when you have a light, and this is this is this is how I know that I am a chosen. I told you many times I can walk into a into a into a subway. Person's not not doing acting out, acting out on something. It happened to me a few times. That's why I hate taking subways in New York City. I talk about this all the time. As soon as I my presence is in that subway, because I guess I'm carrying the light, those demons don't like it, and they and they attack me. The person to start. Rapping, cursing, getting aggressive. He'll look at me like I told you happened a month ago, where I was this guy on the train. It was this 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 guy, this black guy. He came on the train. I'm minding my business. I felt this this I felt the energy that wasn't good, a presence, and I looked around. And this guy, I don't know the guy. He was over there, but soon he see he just got aggressive and looked at me. I'm like, oh Jesus, protect me, Jesus. Here we go. Because I told you, here in New York City, there's a lot of violence in the subways. People are getting stabbed. No type of arguments. The person's minding their business. The person that comes to them, stab them for no reason. Just the other day, the person was minding his business during rush hour. A guy came on, pushed this guy into an on oncoming subway train. Guy died. That happens a lot here in New York City. People getting, people getting pushed into the tracks. Getting hit by train. Some people die. Some people live, but the fact is, un. They, these guys don't. They're not. They're not getting the argument. They're just minding business, waiting for a train, trying to go where they gotta go, and someone comes to them, attacks them, robs them. Happens all the time here. Now I have been blessed by the grace of Jesus that I had had none of those things happen to me. And when someone tries to do something, they walk away. That's because I have Jesus' protection. I have His blood on me. I have those angels. So Satan, they, they, they can only do so much, but they get aggressive. And I always I always notice that. You ever hear when people just hate you for no reason? And it's happens to me a lot here in New York. People just, you don't know. When I, I remember I used to work in a restaurant in Manhattan, in Midtown. I had so much conflict with employees there for no reason. And I'm I'm, I'm quiet. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a laid back person. I get like to get along with every album, a loving person, even before I was even before I was a Christian. I love to get along with people. I love people. I have always been like that. But for some reason, I'm always going to be rejected. But now being a Christian, now I know why. Because we all carry spirits. Some good, some bad. We, and you have the Holy Spirit. And the thing about it, you may not know, you may not know you're a chosen one. But Satan does. Lord have mercy. And I didn't know I was a chosen one. Satan knew all along. That's why I keep getting attacked by people for no reason. I keep getting blamed for stuff. I keep getting people just hating me for no reason. I'm like, why?
what I do to people? And I would never, I, never, I would never have an answer. That's why I got into New Age, trying to go to psychics and things like that. Oh, you, oh you're cursed and you have this and then. But see, Satan doesn't the, see because Satan knows everything too because he's in the spirit. We don't. We're in the flesh. We don't unless we're under some kind of witchcraft or you some kind of psychic. You have you working with demons or you some kind of warlock. You don't know nothing either. You're just thinking why why the world's against me. Well, huh, now I know why. Now, as of the day, I know why the world because we as as chosen ones was not supposed to be. None of us as Christians are supposed to be of the world anyway. The world is going to hate us, but the ones that are chosen will be hated the most. That's why last Sunday, the brother said. The brother said. The brother mentioned something last Sunday. I didn't even go to church. The brother said something to me Sunday. He says, "When you're having a lot of difficult problems in this world, no matter what it is, wherever it's friends." Relationships, can't find a wife, finances. It's because God, you're you're a child of God, and God will bless you in the end. Your suffering, you will you know, I remember the story with the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man and poor man story, where the rich man got carried off to Hades and Lazarus went up in the bosom to heaven because the poor man, he he suffered a lot. And I was always, because I was sitting, I was before I went to church, I was, I was going to go to church, but I didn't. I was sitting, I'm sitting in a, um, in a mall, in a different area, not even my area, a different area. And people was having a good time, and these people have money. These people, I, these people have money. They, they, they're. It's a special club where they got their kids. They have this, this. They have like a pool party, whatever. And they're very wealthy. They're, they're Asians. I was in the Asian community. And I'm saying, and I'm looking, and I guess the Holy Spirit knew what, what was on my mind. Like, why, why, why can I be like that? Why can I have a family? They got families. They have, they're happy with their children, their wives. Why can I be like that? And the Holy Spirit hit me and guided me to this guy. I was watching on YouTube. He says, you are suffering because you're a chosen one. And the chosen ones are going to suffer the most on this planet, in this world. Because of what you carry and what Satan knows you have on you. So he's going to bring everything against you. You will be covered on the blood of Jesus, but you will suffer a lot. Those that don't suffer or not are hard, not suffering at all, especially in a fallen world, those should be worried. They should worry about. They should they have something to worry about. The ones that are not suffering, and like you say, not everyone's really suffering, even though they have it all. They have a f nice family. They have, they have, they're not, they're not financially struggling. But they don't know Jesus. And guess what? When they leave this world and they have to stand in front of their maker, you know what's going to happen to them? God's going to say, you part from me. I never knew you. And then they will spend eternity in hell. Now, that really got me. And I'm like, wow, that's true. People that you see that, because Satan already has those people. So they're not going to, so Satan would give you, like I say, Satan would give you what you, all the worldly things. And even, and still put you through some stuff too. Because that's why celebrity, these celebrities, that's why they still, why either they have these drug problems and mental problems. But Satan deals with people on different sets of ways. He, he deals with, that's like God deals with his people th differently. Th th Satan does the same thing. So when, you, when you're not getting convicted, when you're not having sh struggles, and especially if you, if you say you're Christian, and everything's going, you better, you better check. You better, you, that, Satan's a liar. Because even the Bible speaks about we're going to have struggles, and some will have more struggles than others. The Bible speaks about that, and especially as a Christian, because as God say, they hated me, they're going to hate you too, in my name. Now, as you're chosen, it's going to even be more harder, but kind of all joy, because you are, God will always not give you, he, he will never give you more than you can handle. He will never allow more to come upon you than you can handle. So that is all the questions I have. Holy Spirit answered them. 
Because I, I kept saying, as much as I love people, why I'm still single, why I don't have a lot of friends, because you're a chosen one. Not to say that chosen ones are not supposed to have friends. Not to say that chosen ones can't have a wife, can't have children, can't get married. But as a chosen one, you're going to always be an outcast more than a regular person. Because you're, it's, it's what you're carrying inside you. And you got to understand, these people that you probably want to be around, especially if they, they're not walking with Jesus... They have, they have, they, they, they could be wicked. And the things that's inside sees you and they will automatically hate you because they know what you have. Now, I didn't know this. All these years, I never knew this. Satan knew it, but I didn't know it because Satan knows God's chosen ones. Satan knows them. Crazy. He got, he got, Satan got, <laughs> It, it, God get God get because He's working in the spiritual world. We got and, and I keep I gotta keep I gotta keep remembering that everything here, everything in the spirit, the spirit is more is more real in this world. You if you hear people's testimonies when they have out by experiences when they have visions you and you know. They say that the spiritual world is like 3D to what we live in right now. This is like black and white to what the spiritual world is. So everything that's that that's taking place in this living is being created into the in the spiritual world. It's like we're living in the in a this is like a this is like a playbook. The spiritual world is, is writing a script, and this is actually the movie. God knows. That's why God, God, God made everything. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen next week. He knows everything. That's why nothing new under the sun. Because God, knows, he, he created everything. And the devil knows everything too. The only thing the devil don't know is the time and day, and time and day that Jesus will, be, will, become, will come back for his church. He doesn't know that. But he knows enough to do what he thinks he, he has to do to keep us sidetracked and not find our true purpose. All these distractions, all these fake religions, he's doing whatever he has to do because he knows his time is almost up. He, he knows that. He knows that we're living in these times. He knows much as even everyone, even non-believers, feel it in their heart that something's big is coming, that this is the end days. You see what is happening on Baltimore, right? That bridge? Now, tell me, is this a coincidence? I just heard more about the Sister West, right? The ship got off course. No one knows how. Well, I know how. Because it's, 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 it's it was a spiritual situation. It's biblical. This, that was a warning. Lights and power just went out. I know this, this, this all something that's went out. What do you think that's all about? And it happened the same day that Biden made that comment about they cutting Israel off. It happened the same day. Soon as the United States stated that they're not helping Israel no more, that happened. Now, what did I tell you guys? Watch Israel. Because that's where it's all going to play out. Anyone that's against Israel is against our creator. And he said it. He will punish those. He will judge those. America is bringing the Bible. This is a living word. And whether America know it or not, Everything that they're doing is prophesied right here. And the Bible said that all nations will go against Israel, even America. And they did last week. And what happened to America? This thing with this 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 um, bridge. I've been making many videos about America repent. 
And this is why, this is what, and this is why I was sitting in Mexico. I was like, Jesus, I don't have a problem mentioning the people in America, but I, that's why, but I know they already have many people in America to minister the word of Jesus. There's many channels out of here, but what, where you don't have people like this is in other parts of the world where they don't have the access. And I know for a fact, if they did, because they're seeking for the truth too. If they did, they will receive it more than they do it here in America. Because America is, is, is getting solemn, is, is getting, it seems like getting more sinister every day. Listen, I have never, I have never seen where, usually you have big things happen maybe once a month on the news. But so much is like every second. Every time you turn around, there's some major thing that happened. Before, it was, you look at news, it was never like this. Tell me not living in the last days. But the most important thing is America need to repent. Now that thing that happened in Baltimore, that's just a, that was a warning. That was a small thing. Now, to a lot of people, no, it's not small because that's going to affect those ships. That's a major, major waterway for a lot of trade to come through. That's going to, and that's going to disrupt a lot of financial things and economical things. But forget about that. That's just the beginning, family. We're not even at April 8th yet. What do you think will happen then? You need to get right with God. Just forget about all this other stuff. They'll mean nothing. I'm telling you. Like I said, I was sitting there, I was sitting there this Sunday looking at these people with their families. Like, wow. All I'll ask for Jesus is a wife and have a family. I don't have a kid. I have no, I have no children at my age. And God said, the Holy Spirit said, listen, you're a chosen one. And not to say that I was prepared to suffer. Not to say it at all, but the, because of what you have inside you, you're going to be rejected a lot. You know, even, even, even Christian women reject me. I ask you because I ask you. Just, I mean, of course, I would like to have a Christian woman. I don't want a non-believer. You know, not to say that you can't have a non-believer, but you don't want to be with someone that's unyoked, because that could be a problem. Especially if this is why the girl that I was going to marry in the Philippines, I severed ties with her, because I said, okay, I'm a Christian. The only way this relationship is going to really work is to have God in our lives. She didn't want to hear that. She wanted, she liked to drink, run the street, go to the bars. She loved, she loved that fast life. And she's from the Philippines. She's not even American. She's from the Philippines. And I just had this, okay, we're done. I'm done with her. Cause, cause her, she can, she can, she, she can interfere in my salvation. You know, and this girl was going to marry. But thank Jesus that I didn't marry. Thank Jesus that I was able to become a Christian before that happened. Because it would have been a disaster. Because if trying, trying to marry a non-believer, and, 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 and you don't want to force a person. They get, oh, well, maybe because she loves me, she'll be, no. Because this person already had aggressive issues anyway. But I was willing to deal with it because no one's perfect. No one's perfect. There's no such thing of a of a perfect woman or a perfect husband to marry. I loved her for who she was because to me she she had she had more good things about her and less bad things. So, but because she didn't want to be she didn't want to she wanted to still live her worldly ways. She didn't want to stop cursing. She wanted to she wanted to be in the bars. That would affect me. And that will pretty much drag me down. So I had to make a decision. And um, so, yeah, you know, so. And like I also said, not every Christian that claims to be Christian is Christian. And it, it sometimes it's not by their fault. No, it's not. Because. Not every Christian is going to make the rapture. 
not every Christian is going to make it to the kingdom of heaven, unfortunately, because of lack of knowledge. Now, they may know God, they may know Jesus or love Jesus, but what are they doing? Are they walking like with Jesus? Now, we're going to always sin. We're, until we leave this body, we're going to sin. It's just the way it is. Because we are in this body. Until we're, our spirit is, is detached from this body, and that won't happen until we, we, get raptured out, we get raptured out of here, or we pass, we're always going to have sin. I struggle with sin every day. Look what happened yesterday. I, the devil got under my skin. I start swearing. I repent, and we have to repent daily. We have to pray daily. That's that's the number one thing we need to do, because if not, it's easy for us to fall into the devil's traps. So, said that enough said on that one, but like I say, being a chosen one is nothing special. It's special to God, but living in this world, it's not special because being a chosen one is hard. And, but we just got to count it all joy because we're not supposed to love this world either or nothing in this world. We're not supposed to be attached to it. Even, our, you know, we're not even supposed to be attached to our families. Jesus says, put no one before me. Not even, not just religious idol, uh, idols or nothing like that. Even family, even our children. And that's another thing. People may not understand that. And that might also cause them to go to hell. I'm serious, family. You have to put... God first, even your family cannot, you, you cannot love your family as much as you love Jesus. You have to love Jesus more than your family, family. No one is before Jesus. He's a jealous God. And a lot of people may not understand that. Uh, I guarantee they don't. I know for a fact they don't. Because emotionally, you know, your family is like, and, 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 and I understand, when I mean, you love, whereas your wife or your kid, some people may not know, and I don't know they even preaching this in church. I never heard this in church. See, that's another thing. You know, now there's no perfect church. We know this too. There's no perfect church. There's no perfect church on this earth. This is the perfect thing. This is the perfect word. You can go to any church. Okay. But hold on. I, I repent that too. Don't go to any church. Don't go to any church. You know, we got some LGTBQ churches. No, no, no. <laughs> I, re, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit guide you to church. But. Make sure, family, please, make sure that you're reading your Bibles, okay? This is the most important. This is what's going to save your soul on that day. Not no church, not no pastor, no priest, no spiritually, nobody. This word. Read this word. This is what's going to keep you on the right track. No matter what's going on in the church, read the word. That's the first thing when I became a Christian that, 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 that the Holy Spirit said, read your Bible. Don't be so fascinated trying to find a church. Churches are good. There's fellowship with other sisters and brothers, but you must read the word. And, you know, a lot of people, they only read, read the Bible on Sundays when they go to church. And that's where they get lost. Some people only pray on Sunday when they go to church. This is why, you, and this is why we come up short. And this is what's going to keep us from missing, keep us from making the rapture. 
and keep us probably not from entering the kingdom of God. So as a watchman, as me to, to sit here to tell you these things, I'm telling you, my family, because I want you to understand that it's not just about listening to your pastor. It's not just about you have to understand the Bible. This is what's going to get you to heaven. You can, you know, church is good. You know, it, it can guide you too, give you encouragement. There's no problem with that. But if you don't know the Bible, well, that can be that can be dangerous. Because the way these pastors are, are preaching these days, this this half new warm gospel, your salvation is at hand. So I'm going to pray with you guys right now. I've always been 40, see how time, 40 minutes already. What? You guys got to go to work today. Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanksgiving. We give praise to your name for waking us up this morning. Give thanks for allowing us to be on this earth one more day. Because we don't know the time, the hour, the minute that our time is up. Whether it's the rapture or whether our expiration date has come on this earth. But we give praise and glory to your name, to your son, Jesus Christ. We repent of any sins willfully or unknown sins in Jesus' name and ask for forgiveness. And keep us under your wisdom. Anything that's we're, that's we don't know or any knowledge that is, hasn't been spoken, please reveal it to us in these last days. Guide us to those outlets in the Bible that you said that people will come with misinformation that come as sheep in wolf clothing. And we, and we ask you, Heavenly Father, to just protect us and guide us on the right path. We ask you to bless, bless all those that are in Israel right now. And Israel is being heavily, heavily, heavily pushed to the side. And as you said in the Bible, those that are against Israel will be against me. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, have mercy on those lawmakers in here in Washington, D.C. that they don't know no better. That Satan is operating them and controlling their minds and their decisions. We ask you to plead the blood over this country. We plead the blood of Jesus over this nation. That have touched those hearts that don't know your son Jesus, that they will repent and accept Jesus before it's too late. Because we already know America is under judgment and it's fast approaching. And we ask of you to give America more time to touch those souls that are hardened. And Father, we ask of you to also protect Russia. Bless those ones that lost their, their loved ones in that massacre shooting last week. Plead the blood over Russia that no more attacks like that will ever happen. We also bless, like to pray for Ukraine as well, that because of governments, people in power, that the innocent ones are suffering. Thank you, thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing our prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So, family, I don't want to take no more of your time. You guys have a wonderful day. Like I say, if the Holy Spirit nubbed you to tell someone about Jesus, please tell them. Please. Because like I said, we're not promised the next second on this earth. Forget about the rapture. We may, we may not even see the rapture. 
You never know. No one knows when they're going to take your last breath. We don't borrow time. So I'm going to leave it at that. You guys have a safe day. Be safe. If you watch me, other part of the world, have a wonderful night. I love you. Love all, love everyone. <laughs> love all you. God bless.